I heard a teaching a while ago from Pastor Stephen Furtick, which really spoke to my heart. It really stayed with me, and I want to share a bit about his main concept. It's called, I Know How This Story Ends. I want to start off by going to the story of David and Goliath. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 4, it speaks about Goliath, and it says, A champion named Goliath, who was from Goth, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spare shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. So why do you think they described Goliath and his armor in so much detail? Well personally I think it's to focus our attention on the fact that he was a very scary guy. He wasn't the kind of guy that you would willingly fight against. I mean, in verse 11, it says the Israelites were dismayed and terrified after Goliath challenged them in verse 8 to 10. But we all know how the story ends. I mean, this little guy David shows up, picks up five stones and kills Goliath with the first one. But the part I want to focus on today is in verse 45 to 47. And it says, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. Wow, isn't that just amazing? Before the fight even started, David already knew this was the day that this giant goes down. And not because of how amazing he was, but because of how amazing his God was. He went into that fight wholeheartedly knowing that God was going to come through for him and help him. And we all know how the story ends. David got the victory and God got all the glory. But the thing is, David didn't know how the story was going to end. He didn't get a glimpse of the future and suddenly get a boost of confidence. It was about knowing his father and trusting his father. So I wonder what would happen if we spoke to our struggles the way David spoke to Goliath. I wonder what would happen if we looked at our struggles and said, You come against me to stress me out and to destroy me. But I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel who you have defied. And this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. So the good news is that we're actually a little bit more privileged than what David is. He got to know God and through the relationship he learned to trust Him. But we have been given a whole book of God's resume. He's given us his proven track record to make it easier for us to, to know him and to trust him. But if you are unsure whether God is willing to help you fight your battles, then I want to tell you today that you really need to start reading your Bible because he helped a whole bunch of undeserving people to claim victory over their lives. I mean, let's just take a look at a few of them. Paul killed Christians for a living before he met Jesus. Adam was a blame shifter. Eve couldn't control her appetite. Cain was a murderer and Noah was a drunk. Abraham led his wife off with another man, twice. Sarah let her husband sleep with another woman and then she hated the woman for it. Moses had a temper problem. David covered up his adultery with murder. Matthew was a tax collector and Rahab, David's grandmother, was a prostitute. So if God helped all of these people, why wouldn't he want to help you fight your battles? See, the difference between all of them and a lot of us is the fact that they knew God, and a lot of us don't. So I want to challenge you to make it a priority in your life to get to know God, because with the amazing track record that He's given us, you will find that He would actually love to help you fight your battles. See, all of them had sins and struggles, but their sins and struggles were not the end of their stories. It was merely a part of their testimonies. And the fact that you are still here tells me that God is not done with you yet. And if you would be willing to commit your life to the Lord and get to know Him and learn to trust Him, then you will confidently be able to say, I know how this story is going to end because I know the author. So I, I want to encourage you to take courage in the fact that you are still here because that means that it's not over yet. And I want to leave you with this. I know how the story is going to end. But the question is, do you?